In the world of sports, scrapes, cuts, and scratches are all part of the game. A few years ago, athletes and their coaches didn't have to worry much about these small breaks in the skin. Today, however, they know differently. In 2006, Jeff Ulbrich, a starting linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers, and Demetrius Brown, the leading scorer of the San Jose State basketball team, were put out of commission by small wounds that got infected by the superbug known as MRSA. Antibiotics used to cure simple staph infections easily, but MRSA, or methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, has become resistant to all frontline antibiotics. Left untreated, it can develop into a serious and even life-threatening infection. Take the case of the St. Louis Rams. In 2003, five players were felled by the superbug. Dr. Stanley Derezinski, an expert in multidrug resistant infections and a pro sports medical consultant, analyzed the St. Louis outbreak. Among the Rams in the, in, in the reported outbreak, all the individuals with infections were either linemen or linebackers because they're the ones groveling in the turf all the time. But another interesting uh, observation that was made uh, was the sharing of some inanimate objects, and in particular the fact that these millionaire football players uh, used an average of one towel per three players. Obviously, that should be an easy thing to change uh, within the locker room. Though two of the Rams had to take extremely potent antibiotics intravenously, all five players eventually made a full recovery. The Ram study also pointed to another possible cause of the MRSA epidemic. Prior use of antibiotics appears to predispose to MRSA. The, if I recall the numbers correctly, um, the um, players had received an average of 2.6 ant antibiotic prescriptions in the previous 12 months, which is about 10 times what you would expect of a male of that, a healthy male of that age. Um, so it's the over, over prescription of antibiotics, which is a plague upon this country, uh, that uh, I, seems to possibly also contribute to the problem. Of course, it's not only pro athletes who are susceptible to MRSA. Kids, high school, and collegiate athletes are also at risk. That's why coaches and their medical staffs are working to prevent such infections. Scott Shaw became director of sports medicine at San Jose State in 2007, the year after basketball player Demetrius Brown was sidelined with MRSA. To combat the superbug, Shaw has made important changes in the locker and training rooms. In intercollegiate athletics, there has been an increased awareness of MRSA. People have done a better job of making sure the athletes are showering after workouts. Coaches are making it mandatory. So the steps have been taken by universities, uh, by healthcare facilities, to make sure the cleanliness has increased. As a staff, we try to tell the athletes to use proper hygiene. Uh, the number one thing to help prevent it is for the athletes themselves to go ahead and wash their hands and numerous times through the day. We do that as a staff ourselves. Having the athletes shower right after participation, either at practice or at games. Other important ways of prevention of MRSA is to not share personal hygiene products such as towels, razors, deodorant, bars of soap. When we see anything that may look like a pimple, a spider bite, we just assume right away that it, it could be a staph infection. For young athletes and their parents, learning how to recognize possible MRSA infections and seeking treatment is crucial. Whenever there's an infection of the skin that, where there's lumps, bumps, or pus, then you should suspect staph. And whenever you suspect staph, these days you suspect, suspect MRSA. Some of those may self-heal if they drain on their own, uh, but if there's, a, if there's a boil, and certainly if the child or the, whoever it is has any systemic symptoms like fever or anything like that, then they should seek medical care. The good news is, even if an athlete develops an MRSA infection, early detection and treatment can keep it from becoming life-threatening. For Consumer Health Interactive, I'm Tim Fitzgerald.